Hi guys, so today I'm going to show y'all how to shade three different shapes. So our first shape we're going to do is a circle and turn it into a sphere. Our second shape is going to be kind of a rectangle shape turned into a cylinder, an open cylinder. Um, and our third shape is going to be a triangle turned into a cone. So let's get started on our sphere. So you want to have your light source first to know where to start because if you don't have a light source then you don't know what to shade. No light, no shape. So I'm putting all of my light sources in the same spot but you can try it out any different way. You can test different spots to put your light. It doesn't matter. So I like to first mark where my like highlight spot is. Um, and so then I'm getting like a, a basic shade down and then I'll darken it from there. This is like a medium to light color. So once you have your light area down, that's what I just put down. Um, I, I blend it out a little bit just to uh, make it one solid color instead of really scratchy looking. I, I'm using a blending pencil right now because usually I use my fingers, but <laughs> they're really dry right now. Um, so they're not as oily, so they don't pick up the uh, the graphite as much. I, I prefer using my fingers. I like to have when my fingers are kind of oily because they, I mean, they pick up graphite better. When your fingers are dry, they just kind of rub over the graphite, so. Um, so next, I'm going to put a shadow area, which is um, the darker values, and so it'll kind of start making your sphere start to kind of come to life. Now, I'm doing two different levels of shadow area, kind of a medium color and then a very, very dark color. Um, now, don't be afraid to make it dark. Like, the darker, the better. You wanna have a variety of color. You wanna have a gradient. Um, so you wanna have that white, but you also wanna have as dark as you can get it to where it looks shiny on the paper. That's, that'll make it really pop. Now, if you notice, I'm not going all the way to the other edge of the circle sphere. Um, that is because we're leaving room for reflected light. So the sphere that we're creating, it, pretend it's like sitting on a table. Like that's, that's what you're wanting to draw it as. You want it to be like it's sitting on a table because we are going to give it a shadow after we finish the sphere. Um, and so when light hits something, it reflects off. And so because it's round, it's going to have reflected light bouncing back up and hitting the bottom of the sphere. So that's why we're missing um, the bottom part. That's why it doesn't have as much, it's not as dark. It's because that's the reflected light. And I'm using an eraser just to um, lighten up the spots that I'm, I'm missing. You can, I, in some of my artwork, I will actually go back with an eraser to give it like the highlights. And so that that is another way you can do that. So here I'm going with the darkest shade. Again, don't be afraid of to get it really dark. And it looks really weird right now, but, but you just gotta blend it out. So that, that's what I'm doing right here. So now we're going to be doing our shadow. And so shadows 
are the same shape as the object it is the shadow of. So our sphere, its shadow is still circular, but it's kind of more of a ovally egg shape. Um, and so now once you put your shadow in, you can really see that reflected light on your sphere. And the closer the shadow is to the object, the darker it's going to be. And so if you notice, I make it really dark right up against the sphere and then I just fade it out and you blend it as you go. And it, it's a lot of this is what you see. Like if you see that it's like too dark or too light, you can change it. It really depends on what you see. So now we move on to the cylinder. So this cylinder is hollow, and that is why if you, I start by marking where it's darkest. So on the side opposite of the light source, and then on the inside of the cylinder, it's going to be the closest part of the light source because it is hollow, and so it's gonna be reflecting on the inside of that cylinder. So this one, if you've ever done like a gradient like line, I don't know if you did that in art one or not, but it's kind of like that on the cylinder. You just do darkest and then you just go up and down and fade it into lightest. So you want the white part closest to the light source. And then on the inside of the cylinder, you're gonna do what you just did on the outside of the cylinder, but the exact opposite. You just do the gradient, but facing the other direction. You're moving away from the light source on the inside and you're moving closer to the light source on the outside. to do the shadow and so you want the top of the shadow like where it would be the top of the cylinder you want it to be kind of rounded because the cylinder top is round um, and again you want to make the closer the shadow is to the object darker also with the cylinder because it is round you want the shadow to kind of wrap around the edge a little bit and you can see that I did that right there um, and so that gives it the, um, the look that it's wrapping around the cylinder a little bit. And then just do the same thing, gradient it out. So again, like I did with the cylinder, I marked the darkest side, the side that's away from the light source, just to know where to start and to make sure that it's going to be that dark. And then you really want to make this side, it's going to be a really big spot of dark. And so just, I kind of blend it out a little bit and then I go back and add definition and add more shade and then I go and I blend it out a little bit more. And so it's just, it's a back and forth process. It's kind of a, this process is more of a, how you, you feel it as you go. Like if you feel like, oh man, it's too dark, then go lighten it up with the eraser. Or if it's too light, go darken it. it, it it's really a hands-on sort of deal. And you kind of have to, you learn as you go.
And then finally your shadow, which is going to be shaped like a triangle, just like the base shape you did when you made the cone was. Um, and you want it to wrap around just like you did with the cylinder because they both do have a circular base. So you want to give it that look that it does have a circular base. Um, and then you're just gonna shade it to where it, it's a gradient going away from the object. basic shading of a circle into a sphere, a rectangle into a cylinder, and a triangle into a cone. <laughs>